for the final week of beginner month, then we have this Excel file that has all the different months as different sheets within it. And we have all the new customers that joined in those months. So one way we could make sure to um, bring all these files together is I could say put out, say September, I've got there as a file. I could bring out July and I could union them together, right? And that would stack them on top of one another so that I have all those fields that they have in common um, just sitting one on top of the other and they would be stacked together. That would mean I'd have to drag out every single table individually in order to make that uh, union. But there is also an additional option. So I'm just going to delete this union here and recreate the wildcard union that we could do instead in the input step. So from the input step, we could go along to the tables tab instead. And you see here where it says single table or union multiple tables. So if we select union multiple tables, then down the bottom here, we can see that the included tables now includes everything within this new customer's Excel file. So when I click apply, that's a really important step to making the wildcard union work. Then we can see that we have all of these 12 tables now highlighted, which means that they're included in the union and we get a table names field as well as a file paths field. So because it, they all come from the same Excel, that's not going to be too useful to us. So we can deselect that. Um, but the table names is going to be useful because that will tell us what month each of these customers were joining in. So that's how we can bring all these tables together. And that's what I've done up here in this step. So if I view that data, then I can see all the IDs of those customers, what day they joined in in the month, um, their demographics. But oh, I seem to be having some nulls. And that's because if I look a few fields over, I've also got two more demographic fields. Um, it seems like there were some slight typos on some of the months of the data. So I can just click on each of these. So control click to select all three. And then I get this option up the top here to merge those fields together. And that's exactly what I've done in this next step so that we have all those demographic, demographic values together in one field now, which makes it easier to work with. Next up, I want to be able to create a date for my data. So I have the joining day, I have the table names as the month, and then I also know that they all were in 2023. So I'm going to make a calculated field that brings them all together in one field. So this is my calculated field. I just do the joining day plus a space plus the table names plus a space and then plus 2023. So that gives me a field that looks very much like this. Then I can just click on the um, data type symbol there and change it to be a date instead, which will update that field as well. And I can remove those joining days and table names fields so that now I just have all the information contained in one field as a date, which is great. Now we get to the part of the challenge where we want to reshape the data. So as we said, we've got this demographic information that has the account type, the date of birth and the ethnicity for these customers in one field and the values for those are contained over here um, in another field, which is easy enough for us to read. You know, we can see here that all the information about this customer is across three different rows, but maybe not so easy to work with in Tableau, for example, if we wanted to filter to all customers who have a platinum account type, for example, that becomes a little bit more difficult. So we're going to reshape the data. We're going to turn these rows that we have into column headers instead. So we're going to use a pivot. And when we introduce this pivot here, I'm going to actually introduce another one just so I can set it up with you right now. You can see that it defaults to columns to rows. And that's the type of pivot we did last week. So I'm going to click on the drop down and instead I'm going to change it to be a rows to columns pivot. So we've got two sections here where we need to drop fields into. First of all, we need to select the field which will create the new headers, which rows are going to go and be columns now. And that is our demographic field. So I just drag that over. And you can see it loads the distinct values. So I'm now going to get three new columns. OK, and you can see I've got this kind of alert that's popped up here. Um, and that's just because I haven't dropped any fields down here to tell it what values to put underneath those columns. And that will be our value field. So I'm going to drop that down the bottom as well. And then by default, it goes to account. But instead of count, we actually want it to be doing a min or a maximum. It doesn't matter which one. 
but if we select max value then we now have these values underneath um, the new column headers which is great we can see that our date of birth is actually a string at the moment so if we go to the drop down there we can change it to be a date and that's all that i've done in this next clean step here okay so looking at our data it is all looking really good there's just one thing that's not quite adding up. So we should have a row per ID and we can see that we've got 989 unique IDs, but we've got 990 rows. Hmm. In fact, if we use the histogram on the right hand side here and click, then we can actually see that this customer here has two rows. So they have two different joining dates, which is clearly an error in the data. So if we want to deduplicate our data, um, take the first joining date as the correct joining date, then we'll need an aggregate step in order to do this. So we group by each of the IDs, the account types, the date of birth and the ethnicity, and then we just take the minimum joining date in order to make that a deduplicated data set. And then we're ready to output our data. It's all cleaned up and we've completed the final challenge of beginner month. Well done if you got through all four of these challenges and we hope that you learn a lot from it. So thanks very much for watching.